Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to be going over my Widow Hail Ice Shot Deadeye build from Crucible League. You might notice here this character is missing a head because this character does not have lots of life. This character is a mapping specialist, not useful for much outside of that. The big thing here is I wanted to utilize the new Widow Hail Crude Bow introduced in Crucible League that gives you increased bonuses gained from Equipped Quiver and and I'm using the Poised Prism to stack Dex, Strength, and Int, giving me a bunch of flat damage. And since I'm using this bow, it greatly magnifies the amount of flat damage I'm getting for attribute stacking. So it's an attribute stacker, and I actually made something useful out of this bow. Crucible Tree here really doesn't matter. I'm getting a little bit of extra Dex and Int, and more importantly, this Charge Duration. But I will get into that later. I'll show you what's going on here as I will throw in just a T16 map. T16 map with like 2600 effective HP is pretty crazy. Some Eater of Worlds influence here as well. i show you what's going on. So also this league in Crucible, we got a Vol Ice Shot, which you'll get to see as well. But this build just like tears through maps and pretty much if anything hits me, I'm dead. That's how it works. And then here I will use the Vol Haste, Vol Ice Shot. Where did it go? Took out the one of them. I also have some artillery ballistas for some extra damage if needed. But for just general map clear, this build will clear just like anything that gets on the screen with it. Tougher rare enemies might take a couple more hits, but it chains. And I've got a Herald of Ice that is causing the ice spikes on the ground. But it has the damage to pull this off, making use of the Widow Hail bow. There's no damage on the bow. It all comes from the quiver and stacking attributes to make it function. So it can, it can do this. It can clear the map. But if you're trying to do anything serious with this build, it's going to die. And I might die in this map even. But that's what Cast on Death portal is for strong box easy this is probably my fastest map clear build that i created on the league just because it it does so much damage and it chains across everything oh almost died there and then here's the boss of the map will bring out the vault ice shot boys for the boss nuke it and boom map clear nice and easy oh and then i died but like i said cast on death portal turn my heralds and aura back on just jump right back in and revenge just like that not a lot going on here just a basic bow build but stacking enough damage to actually make it do something and but that's a T16 map. I, I did die once, but yeah, that's what's going to happen when you don't have lots of life. So to go into this here, I am using a Vault Ice Shot. It is linked with Elemental Damage with Attacks, Ice Bite to generate Frenzy Charges while clearing, Trinity so that I can get Elemental Penetration. And since I'm stacking attributes, giving me flat to all different elements, I can actually generate Trinity, increase critical strikes, and power charge on critical. Now, this is not ideal, but the build struggles the most with keeping up power charges, which you really need to get those extra crits. So that's why I'm using a power charge on crit for my sixth link. There's probably something better here if you could get the power charges figured out. So I am using Assassin's Mark with a mark on hit. So any rare or unique enemy will get an Assassin's Mark on it. And I have this qualityed up. So I have a 5% chance to gain a power charge when I hit an enemy that is cursed with Assassin's Mark. But most times I'll kill them so quickly that like I can't get those power charges up and have them matter. I also have a frost blink. I have a steel skin. The steel skin is pretty vital. That it's like doubling my effective HP when the steel skin is up, which is pretty massive. I got the cast on death portal. I'm running Wrath, Herald of Ice, and Herald of Thunder. I had to use Wrath because without Wrath I was not doing enough lightning 
damage to balance Trinity. So basically when I'm looking through the listing here at the tooltips, I'm doing 8337 to 15,000 cold damage and then 689 to 15586 lightning damage. So I need enough lightning damage for occasionally I do more lightning damage with the hit than I'm doing cold damage. And the cold damage actually does continue to go up once the frenzy charges come because of the ice bite. So the wrath wound up being necessary and I'm just doing lesser fire damage across the board because I've, I really focused on dexterity and intelligence as opposed to strength as well. So since it's an attribute stacking build, I got the Black Sun Crest, and up here I have an Artillery Ballista, Eldie with attacks, multiple totems, faster attacks. This is really just so I can have something to let enemies target that is not me, and I can fire through them. Yeah, they'll do a little bit of extra damage because they're getting all of the extra bonus here. It could be in the six link, but I was really trying to focus on the ice shot. Never got around to doing too much with that i have a summon ice golem i have a vol haste linked with divine blessing and inspiration so this means i can use haste with eldritch battery to spend a bunch of my energy shield to get haste up while i'm running around through the maps and it'll last longer and then i have a vol haste with the vol ice shot so then when i need single target i get the extra buff extra speed and when I'm popping out all of the, the six Mirage Sharpshooters for the Vol Ice Shot, it will work really nicely. The Golem dies all the time, but you can bring it back. Extra crit chance there. But yeah, Black Suncrest is ideal for any attribute stacking build. I was playing this in SSF. I never got a Helm Enchant for it. And it's not perfectly rolled here. My Amulet, I never got an Astramentus in SSF. Astramentus would probably be better here but i did just get a bunch of attributes on this got a little bit of extra crit multi and there's no life here like its stack is much damage as possible with this build then i'm wearing two of the taming rings these rings have a bunch of all elemental resistances which is very nice gives you chance to free shock ignite bunch of ellie with attacks and increased damage with hits and ailments per free shock or ignite on an enemy so since i am actually doing damage with all the different elements if i'm shocking igniting and freezing that enemy that's another 60 percent increased damage on top of the 32 percent elemental 32 percent ellie with attacks so much damage out of the taming and that's why i'm wearing two of them trying to use turbulent catalysts to spruce this up as much as i can this one didn't roll as well on the all res my belt is a synthesized chain belt that gave me 18 percent increased dexterity and i rolled a big strength roll on this i got ellie with attacks and then put more dex and int on here again no life on the belt so it could be better. I am using replica void walker boots. So you have phasing if you've killed recently, and then my projectiles can chain in additional time while I have phasing. So if I can chain more, I clear more with each shot through the map. So that's really good. Also get some dexterity here on these boots as well. Also no life. And then the, the last thing I did to this build was I swapped out a pair of gloves for these runic gauntlets. Uh, trying to stack as much ward on it as possible and 305 ward here is over 10 percent effective hp gain by using ward gloves and i crafted this using a essence of zeal to guarantee the attack speed roll on it and then eventually hit some ward and also a little bit of life there was pretty cool the chest has a haste aura effect crit multi for attack damage implicits i needed big energy shield on this piece of gear so that i had enough energy shield with eldritch battery to be able to survive the cost of haste and since i'm using eldritch battery like i could reserve my mana all the way and use my energy shield to cast all of my skills really easily don't gotta worry about any mana stuff there then i have a jade flask for more evasion i have onslaught flask silver flask giving me extra crit chance as well attack speed on the diamond flask and the movement speed also with attack speed with the quicksilver flask so it, it worked pretty well given what i wanted to do if like I wanted a really fast map clearing build and it pulled it off and actually got enough damage to be able to handle the higher tier 
maps. Now, even something like this map here, it might be a little bit outside of this character's range to even take down the Conqueror Veritani in the map. You would have to have the Vol haste up, have to get the Vol ice shot, and you have to kill it within that window, or you're pretty much going to die, basically. So... You can't really do much with this outside of just clearing maps. So looking at the Ascendancy, I got Gathering Winds, and it's safer if you go for Wind Ward, and then you take less damage taken per Gale Force that you gather from Gathering Winds. But instead, I went for Far Shot Projectiles, deal more damage to targets as the projectile travels further, and I'm killing things off screen, so the projectiles are definitely traveling really far, getting two additional projectiles and getting the additional chain and allowing projectiles to chain colliding with terrain. So I'm getting two additional chains now without running chain by using the replica Voidwalker boots and being a Deadeye grabbing Ricochet. But then on the passive tree, it's pretty much the same thing. Stack as much damage as possible. I'm not getting Heart of Oak. Ballistics here, projectile damage. Aspect of the eagle, damage with bows, attack speed with bows. Push up here, then push down for forces of nature to get 10% elemental penetration with it. And then hits have a 25% chance to treat enemy monster elemental resistance values as inverted. I'm not doing anything to lower elemental resistances on enemies outside of the lightning exposure on hit on these gloves. It's the only thing I have to lower enemies elemental resistances. Outside of that, it's all crit based. I did push in here to get Revenge of the Hunted for spell suppression this is really big life evasion evasion helps you stay alive but then i got 10 percent increased movement speed if you haven't taken damage recently grab prowess thief's craft because this is strength and int 30 strength here gives me oh so that'd be three to six fire damage to attacks right no because i'm getting 228 percent increased bonuses from equipped quiver so let's say it's just 200 percent. so this is actually factoring in three times per every 10 strength. So every 10 strength is giving me three to six fire damage. So this prowess node here giving me 30 is actually giving me nine to 18 flat fire damage. And the same goes with all the int and that's why we go attribute stacking with this. But here I also have multi-shot. This is giving me another projectile up to three additional here with some attack speed on the way. And Master Fletcher gives bow attacks an additional projectile now as well. So that's how I'm firing five arrows with no LMP, no GMP, nothing to lower the damage of my hits. But then I, I grabbed Accuracy here. Dexterity's Accuracy bonus grants three additional accuracy rating per Dexterity instead of two. So this allows all the decks I'm getting to cover me on Accuracy. Grab the Frenzy Charge here. We have a Brutal Restraint and there's so so many nodes that I've gotten inside this wheel that I, I looked for as much as I could here. King of the Hills crit chance with bows. This is all crit chance here. Crit multi against unique enemies. All lots of damage. And the bow mastery I've taken is arrows gain critical strike chance as they travel further up to 100% increased critical strike chance. That's more damage. And with this brutal restraint here, I anointed aspect of the links because this had an extra 20% projectile damage on it. So this has wound up being 40% damage, 5% movement speed, 20% crit chance with what I got here. But I got 5% dex on Heartseeker, 20% damage with Poison, 20% evasion rating on Herbalism, 20% projectile damage on Fervor, 20% evasion on Master Fletcher, 10% flash charges gained there up here. I'm getting a 25% crit chance on multi-shot, another 20 flat decks on forces of nature, and every small passive allocated in here as well as also giving me extra dexterity. So the Brutal Restraint really helped to scale the dexterity pushing and give me more damage out of the quiver. Further on down, I have Primeval Force. This is elemental damage during flask effect and with attacks. More damage there. Grabbed Lethality. Projectile attacks have increased crit chance and multi with Increased projectile damage per 16 dexterity. I have 897 dex, so that's a lot of extra projectile damage. So had to grab that. Grab the dexterity wheel here. Utmost swiftness as well as 5% increased all attributes from the mastery. Have calling strike against marked enemies 
from Marked for Death, as well as a chance to gain a Frenzy Charge when you hit a Marked Enemy. Since my Frenzy Charge generation is baked into Ice Bite, I can't get Frenzy Charges against a single target. This Mark Mastery allows me to get those Frenzy Charges, and then I grabbed Beef and Wisdom of the Glade. Pushing up the top side, I did grab Clever Thief. This gives me attack damage, leeches, life, and mana before you can get into an Eldritch Battery setup that will allow you to leech mana and have enough of it as well as leeching life if you are like taking any degens or something you can actually leech there blood drinker recover two percent of life on kills so if i'm taking damage i can recover life that way as well and like these nodes right here herbalism revenge of the hunted and blood drinker that's like the life nodes that this build gets next up in here i have a jewel with attack speed attack speed crit chance for lightning skills Grab another Frenzy Charge and Power Charge. Arcing Blows, increase lightning damage with attacks and damage with weapons penetrates lightning resistance. Down here, I originally had those points into Fangs of Frost, but this increased cold damage wound up shifting the balance for Trinity too far in Cold's favor, so I had to do extra with lightning damage. So getting these lightning nodes and Arcing Blows helped there. There's also a 60% crit chance against enemies with lightning exposure and since i have lightning exposure on the gloves the mastery here for that crit chance could come into play next i have written in blood 10 percent strength life energy shield here as well as regenerate two percent energy shield per second so i can't really run out of that and then we pushed up here to get eldrick battery got utmost intellect for the int here and then one percent increased damage per five of your lowest attribute which is strength 266 divided by five is 53.2 so that is 53 percent increased damage based on the strength so that was worth and then i grabbed physique alacrity and throat seeker for more crit multi and that is pretty much the build as i created it i didn't spend too much time and effort working with this um, it's a lot of unique gear so it's pretty easy to replicate and put together defenses are nothing crazy i do have resists capped because there's so much resists on the poise prism and i'm getting so much bonus on those resists from the bow so the only thing really hurting here is chaos resist and i did get a little bit of that on the chest now i mentioned it before like the energy shield i need to get without inspiration a max level haste like that's 709 mana spent like that almost completely degens all of my energy shield so that's why i threw an inspiration in here with the divine blessing so that it only costs 531 and yeah i, I made this in ssf so there's probably more that can be done with this for sure if you wanted to replicate this and i will be linking all of the videos from my crucible solo self found series if you want to go through step by step on how i built this character and got it to this point those videos will be there and i guess lastly i will let's see if i what i can do against like a let's try a minotaur i'm gonna get hit and destroyed by it no matter what so let's try less recovery rate of energy shield is bad is reflect is bad minus max fizzes fire blind power charge on hit throw it in this like is the ideal build to run stuff like this like we're using my life pool is based on the six portals here ideally i just don't get hit and just run all the way through to the end of the map killing everything that shows up and it, it'll kill things and then we'll we'll see how the vol i shot handles minotaur at the end of it but it, it gets it done the shatters are fantastic and you got to be really on it uh, make sure you don't die sometimes you got to play kind of well sometimes you might need to bust out the vault ice shot for a tougher rare enemy rogue exile even dies pretty nicely there and just cover the ground in ice spikes from the herald of ice oh it took three enemies to kill me turn my wrath herald device hail the thunder back on go back in and boom revenge uh-oh we've got betrayal oh they got me i tried to use the vol i shot 
I might have gotten one of them. <laughs> but th this is what you expect with this build. It's like, oh, this build is bad because the build can't survive. Yeah, you can absolutely say this build is bad. And it's not going to hurt my feelings any at all. Uh, but it, it did what it just was designed to do using the Widow Hail bow and finding some use in it with the poised prism it can absolutely be made to be better maybe if you stack more strength than i did evasion and intelligence you'd have a lot more life there get better life rolls on gear but i was working with ssf setup here really early in the league i made this and yeah i was pretty happy with it i was i was happy to see the new bow work and it actually worked better than i expected it to now, I don't know of any better build or anything else to do with the Widow Hail bow. And I should also mention that I think a 200, a max 250% roll on this will give you an extra one on the top end of your dex and strength rolls. But 234 or higher, I believe, would get you an extra flat top end lightning damage. And I, I spent way too many divines trying to get a better Widow Hail. I, I wound up settling in at 228, so... 234 is a decent breakpoint, and anything from 234 to 250 will be the same. So if you can't get 250, get 234 or higher to make something like this work. And it's possible, like, there's a better, like, skill than Ice Shot, but then again, I wanted to use the Vol Ice Shot, and then I'm pairing it with the Vol Haste, and let's proc him. Just blast, 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 blast. And that, like, oh, like, I did a lot of damage there. But now the Vol Ice Shot's gone. I can put down the Artillery Ballistas and maybe they can... Oh, I got, I got hit by one little thing and dead. Very close. And I do have the Culling Strike against Marked Enemies, so was able to take it out there. Another Synthesis map. But that's... That is the build, that's how it works, that's how it functions, and you don't need life if you can kill the boss, right? But that's going to be all for this one. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button as it really helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe, make sure you don't miss more videos from me. If you'd like to help support my channel, please consider using the super thanks to the heart icon just below the video or by joining to become a member, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.